Man, I didn't realize that was a Cardinals. <laughs> but, man, um, today's message, we go through at Christ Church, the teaching and commands of Christ. And um, today's message is titled, The Big Deal, or The Real Deal. And I, I'm visual. I love sports. I grew up enjoying sports. Um, so when I saw this, to me, those people are the real deal in my mind. Man, the, the talent they have, the abilities they have. But as, we, as I got ready to, to teach and, and write this sermon, looking at the, the real deal and what the real deal really looks like, and if you're, again, new, new here, we're going through the teaching and commands of Christ, the red letters, the, the words in the Bible that are spoken by Jesus. Um, I was looking at it, and I'm thinking, there's got to be more to this real deal. It just can't be athletic ability. So I looked up Google. Google is amazing. I put in the real deal, and a list of traits came up for that. And here's the list. I had. They, they had a bunch of them, but here's the list I thought was perfect for what we are talking about here. It's loving, honest understanding, loyal, truthful, trustworthy, integrity, and dependable. That was the list of the character traits of somebody that is the real deal. There's a lot more to that list than just someone's ability and their, their greatness in a sport in a specific area. So I wanted to tie in today what that looks like and who we should believe is the real deal. So if you would stand with me out of reverence when we start the reading, um, the teaching and command today out of Luke 14, 25 to 27, it says, this is Jesus talking. It says, a large crowd was following Jesus. He turned around and said to them, if you want to be my disciple, you must by comparison hate everyone else, your father and mother, your wife and children, brother and sisters, yes, even your own life. Otherwise, you cannot be my disciple. And if you do not carry your own cross and follow me, you cannot be my disciple. Let's pray. Dear God, I ask you to just open our hearts today. Speak through me. Open our minds so we can learn to grow to be like your son. We thank you for your sacrifice. We just want to be better every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Preparing for this, one statement he said in there really jumped out to me, and he said it twice in a row. He says, you cannot be my disciple if this happens or that happens. Those are pretty strong words. But hopefully it leads us to dive in to the utmost importance of our surrender, of our feelings and our will to follow him fully. See, no one or anything in this world can take the place of him in our lives. Nothing. He is the real deal. We cannot have standards of our feelings and our happiness are leading us. And whatever makes us feel good, we're going to do. We have to tie it in to love him above everything else. In comparison, we hate our mother, our father, our wives, our kids, even ourselves, and take up our cross. Look what it says in Luke 18, 29, and 30. This is Jesus again. He says, yes, Jesus replied, and I assure you that anyone or everyone who has given up house or wife or brother or parents or children for the sake of the kingdom of God will be repaid many times over in this life and will have eternal life in the world to come. Man, that is so much more than we can handle sometimes to think about. He's not saying, oh, just leave your spouse and your family and all that stuff and your house. Just leave it and come. He's going, listen, you have to love me so much. When you do, your, your direction, your love, your life, your footsteps are going to follow me fully. They won't be detoured by even our family members. We can't. We have to love him above all else. In comparison, it says, even hate the others. And we'll get into a little bit. He doesn't really mean hate. We talk about the Greek a little bit later. See, so much in our mind, we get caught up in our feelings and what we feel is right and what we think will keep us happy and keep us growing in this world. And we have to remember and understand that Jesus is the way, 
the truth, and the life. No one gets to heaven without him. No one. We have to start there. If we don't believe that, we got a lot more to think about and worry about than anything else. All right, if you're new here, you don't know Christ, and this is just something you, you thought you'd stop in, you're feeling something changing, man, come in and talk to us. Let's learn together to be followers of Christ and learning together to walk this out. But we have to understand that basic, basic truth. He is the way to heaven. See, Jesus has all those traits I mentioned. See, he's loving, he's honest, understanding, he's loyal, truthful, trustworthy. He has integrity, dependable. That's Jesus, all of them. See, those athletes and all that cool stuff that we think sometimes in this world, they might be great people. But man, Jesus encompasses all the traits that make it him and make it our life easier because he is the real deal. He's not showing differences. He's not casting different shadows. See, we can't let anyone keep us from taking up our cross daily. Daily. Trent talked about it last week in his message. If you, if you didn't see it, go watch it on, on the website. It, 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 they all go together. Jesus is talking through all these gospels and see it. But our, our struggles, our, our um, feelings, our flesh, we got to take up that cross daily and let it go and follow Christ. That's where that love comes in. And then we can walk out understanding and knowing that this world isn't our home. We have a home yet to come that's perfect. There's no more fear, no more pain, no more suffering, no more tears. That's our goal. That's why it's important that we understand who Jesus is and we're willing to learn and understand when he says, if you love me, you'll obey me. See, that's not works. That's love that drives us to do what he showed us. See, salvation is free. God sent him. He came. He died. He was raised, raised from the dead and ascended back to heaven. And we have that bridge back to home, our true home. But he says, if you love me, you'll obey me. There's no works in that. That's just living a life, letting me live through you and leading you. See, Revelations 3, 18 and 20 says, so I advise you to buy gold from me. This is Jesus again. I advise you to buy gold from me, gold that has been purified by fire. Then you will be rich. See, it doesn't have to do about money. But he's saying, listen, if you get this fullness, this, this gold from me that I have purified, and, and, and the richest gold that can be, the most pure gold that can be, get it from me, you'll be able to get through this world. You'll be able to get through the trials, the tribulations, the craziness that this world will constantly give at us. See, Satan, the ruler of this world, is here to kill, steal, and destroy. He's on full alert daily, trying to knock, off, knock us off, trying to change our minds, trying to get us to feel how good it is to feel good. And hey, if you feel good, it's got to be right. You see the danger in that? If we're led by our feelings, man, there's a lot of things in this world that will make us feel good. And Jesus is saying, let it go. Love me. And in comparison, you should hate everyone else, even yourself. It goes on to say, also, buy white garments for me, so you will not be ashamed of your nakedness, and anointment for your eyes, so you will be able to see. See, get that. That's an understanding of who he is. That's learning and growing and understanding that we can be different and we can grow and truly learn and, and understand and learn wisdom from him. Get some anointment for your eyes so you can truly see. The Bible says in a few places, if you have ears to hear, that's the same kind of thing. We want to understand, we want to, to live our life for him. 
19 goes on and says, I correct and discipline everyone I love. So be diligent and turn from your indifference. Be diligent. That's putting effort in. It's hard to be diligent in something and not do anything, not have effort going. Be diligent. It says in 20, I'm getting a bad hum back. Are you hearing that? Or is it just me? Look, I stand at the door and knock. If you hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and I will share a meal together as friends, or we will share a meal together as friends. Man, that is so cool to me. See, he's saying, if you hear me when I'm knock. See, sometimes the world clouds us out. The world is so noisy that we cannot hear him. We don't hear that knock. He's not going to be pounding on that door. He's going to knock. If you hear me, he says, and you open the door, I will come in and we will share a meal together as friends. See, that makes him the real deal. That shows his love. That shows no matter what is happening, he wants us to connect. See, he gave us a life that we can live fully in this world on earth as it is in heaven. Even while we weren't worthy, that's the real deal. He didn't say, oh, clean your act up, and then I might go to the cross for you. No, he went to the cross. He said to his father in his prayer, not my will be done, but yours. If you can take this cup, please do but not my will be done. He went to the cross while we were still sinning, sinners and not worthy of it. That's the real deal. He cleans us. We don't have to clean ourselves. So look at what Jesus asks of us in that scripture. He says, one, he says, he asked us to take up our cross. See, this is daily. It's not Sunday. It's not, hey guys, it's Sunday. Let's go to church. Let's take up our cross. Come on. We're going, to re- we're going to do it today. It's Sunday. No, it's every day. We have to understand that we wake up, we have a relationship, we talk to Jesus, we read his word, the Bible, and we ask and we seek and we knock daily. That's what helps us love him above everything else. That's what guides us. I love that the church here, Christ Church, we're reading through the Bible in a year, and we had a a lot of people sign up to read that, and it's been fun every morning to see the next day. Now we're coming down. If you have that Bible app and you're doing it through that, that little line goes, when it first started, I was like, oh, I'm never going to finish this. And now we're over 260-something, and it's coming to, to an end. We're coming close to the end of the year, and it's flying here, but every day I get to read and study and get that relationship built up. That's part of taking up your cross. Because now when you feel you need to do this, or this feels right, i got to do this. See, that reading, that relationship, that picking up that cross continually, man, I know I don't need that. I just need Jesus. And I can walk it out. Number two, it says, by comparison, hate everyone else. Man, that's mean. Hate everyone else. So I looked it up. In the Greek, that word hate in context of this scripture is maseo, and it means to love less. That's it. It doesn't mean to hate them where, oh, I'm not talking to you anymore. Oh, I hate you. You don't believe or agree with what I do. No, it says love them less. So we are love God above all, and then everyone else in our life, we love them less than we love God. That's it. We still love them. We still enjoy them. We have to have a standard, though, that is set, and that standard is Christ. See, if our family doesn't line up with Jesus, what we see in God's Word, the Bible, if our family does not line up with that, we need to love them less than we love God. See, when Jesus is walking with his disciples, and he's telling them what's going to happen to him, Peter steps up and goes, that's not going to happen. We can't. And he goes, get behind me, Satan. See, he wasn't calling Peter Satan. 
He's saying you're thinking only from a world's point of view. See, this has to happen. We have to be with all right with sharing with our family what we believe and sticking to those guns and sticking to our belief and not wavering because, oh, my son says he, he's going to be angry. He doesn't want to do this anymore. And if you don't change your mind, I'm, I'm not going to talk to you anymore. Oh, I have to talk to my son, so I'll forget what God says. See, you think that doesn't happen. It's hard, life sometimes. We'll get challenges. Satan will use anything and anyone to get us to lean on our feelings in this world. See, when we take up our cross daily, we think about him. And then there's joy, and there's thankfulness, and there's peace, and there's patience, and there's kindness, and and goodness, and self-control. And the fruit of the Spirit starts filling us, and we start living like that, even in the hardest times. Even when it gets so crazy, we don't understand it. See, it's easy for us to get caught up in this world and with our family and loved ones. It's easy to do that. This world has some neat things for the flesh. And every day we're ready, but it's easy to get caught up. But when we focus on Jesus and we're building a relationship daily and we're asking and we're seeking and we're knocking and we're growing, we don't become perfect. We become better. We become Christ-like. We start living out we will treat the people in our family and our loved ones and our life way better than we can on our own. I always share with people when they come in for marriage help or whatever, I go, I'll tell the, the, the wives or the, the, the girls that are getting married, man, you guys are crazy. Women are crazy. Wives are crazy. And then I'll go, and... Guys, you're crazy. In the woman's eye, man, you're nuts. See, we're both crazy without God. We're different people coming together to make it work, and we have to have that alignment with God first. And we love him above everything else, and we love everyone else a little less than that. And now all of a sudden, we're not living for ourselves. See, our life, it should be living for others. And now that crazy wife, I start living for her and not for me. See, things start working out because God is the center. Christ is the center. And I start living, not just living for myself. Same thing with my spouse when she doesn't just live for her. That's the way you get together when there's two different people working and trying to love and shine a light for people. And that's what Jesus is telling us in this world. This is not your home. There's going to be crazy people, crazy things, crazy thoughts. Lock in with me. I'll get you through there. I'll walk it with you. I'll give you the strength you need. He will never, never guide us wrong. Never. Not a little, not maybe. He will never guide us wrong. Luke 21, 34 and 36 says, Watch out. Don't let your hearts be dulled by carousing and drunkenness and by the worries of this life. Watch out, he says. This life is going to throw all these things at you that seem so cool. Watch out. Don't let your hearts be dulled by drunkenness and carousing and the worries of this world. He says, don't let the day catch you unaware like a trap. See, each day, Satan's working. He's trying. Don't let this day catch you like a trap. Watch out. Don't let this day catch you. You see the trend? He's telling us to have a relationship. Open it up. Make sure your love is to me first. He said that day, that day will come upon us. It continues on in 35 For that day will come upon everyone living on earth. No one's void from bad things happening. No one's void from a struggle. No one's void from our feelings leading us to take our flesh over what God, we know that God is showing us. Nothing. It will always happen. And look what it says next in 36. Keep alert at all times. 
So we got watch out. Don't let the day catch you unaware and keep alert at all times. Man, that's a God that is the real deal, that loves us enough to tell us in three, four scriptures or two scriptures three times to be ready. I don't want you to get caught in this world. It will happen as soon as you feel comfortable. Man, I don't need to pick up my cross today. I picked up my cross four days in a row, and I'm feeling great. And all of a sudden, Satan goes, oh, this is easy. Wham! And you're right back in the world. I'm still trying to figure out Carl Jr. and how supermodels dressed in bikinis eating a triple stack burger is worth going to Church Carl Jr.'s for. See, the world wants to entice you to think this will sell you to buy my burgers. That's what the world does. It always challenges you and makes your feelings be a part of what you do. I've never seen a woman eat a triple burger like that. That's crazy. And for me, I don't want anyone to mess around with my food. I don't care who's there. I want to go eat and concentrate on eating. But the world doesn't care. Every single day, keep alert at all times and pray that you might be strong enough to escape these coming horrors and stand before the Son of Man. This world's getting crazy. If you're breathing today and you turn on the TV at all or you listen to anything with politics or this world or what's going on, it's getting crazier and crazier. We have to be ready to know what the Word says, not what the world says. The real deal shows mercy and love. That's exciting to me too because, man, sometimes I fall short. I know it's hard to believe. Sometimes I fall short of the glory of God, and I have to make sure, and, and I go, God, oh, God, forgive me. I can't believe I did that. And I repent, and he's like, all right, let's go. Look at this. I love this story in 1 Kings. Ahab's a king, and, and, and he is one of the worst kings ever, it says. And his wife is Jezebel. And she is leading him to do these nasty things too. And I don't know, I don't get a picture of her, but she must be all right because he's willing to do whatever she wants in this. And he's got a relationship, not a good one, with Elijah, who is the prophet of that time. And he, he goes, man, every time Elijah comes to me, he tells me bad news. So it picks up here in, verse, in chapter 21, verse 20. It says, so my enemy, you have found me. Ahab exclaimed to Elijah, and Elijah goes, yes, I have come because you have sold yourself to what is evil in the Lord's sight. So now the Lord says, I will bring disaster on you and consume you. I will destroy every one of your house, your male descendants, slave and free alike. Anywhere in Israel, I am going to destroy your family as I did the families of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, and the family of Basha, son of Ahada. For you have made me very angry and have led Israel into sin. And regarding Jezebel, the Lord says dogs will eat Jezebel's body at the plot of land in Jezreel. The members of Ahaz's family who die in the city will be eaten by dogs, and those who die in the fields will be eaten by vultures. No one else so completely sold himself to what was evil in the Lord's sight, as Ahab did, under the influence of his wife Jezebel. You need to love the Lord more than your wife, your husband, your parents, your kids, or you're not worthy to be my disciple. See, he's following Jezebel and most of his decisions. And look what God says. It goes on. His worst outrage was worshiping idols, just as the Amorites had done, the people whom the Lord had driven out from the land ahead of the Israelites. But when Ahab heard this message, he tore his clothing, dressed in burlap, and fasted. He even slept in burlap and went about in deep mourning. 28 says, Then another message came from the Lord to Elijah. Do you see how Ahab has humbled himself before me? 
Because he has done this, I will not do what I promised during his lifetime. Oh. Man, that's mercy. See, I don't have to worry about being clean first. He is going to clean me white as snow as I keep walking along. Man, that's pretty hard news. Man, they're going to eat your body, dogs or vultures. I don't know what's better. But just because he humbled himself, all right, this won't happen in his lifetime. That's all God wants from us. Open up and step to him. Look at it, finish it out. It will happen to his sons. I will destroy his dynasty. See, he's not going to do it if they don't, if they collect and connect and, and start doing his will. But if they don't, this is disastrous happening. That's the same as our life. Like I said, Old Testament is, is different. It's our history. It's creation. It's how God set it up to say, look, at this is what I want my children to do is follow these ways and, and do this. And then he said, listen, it's perfect when I send my son. I'm going to send Jesus to bridge it. Now, the New Testament is how we live. I had a person tell me, because I, I believe the Bible is 100% infallible. Word of God. And they, they, they laughed at me, posting it, and said, so the Old Testament says, if you eat pork, you should die. I eat pork. Should I be dead? That's their concernment of the word of God. And I was like, oh, man, I just pray that you get it. Take the history, the creation, how amazing it was to see the steps it went through, then see Jesus. He died for us. Oh, we are sinners. He will wipe us clean. He covered our sins. He wants us to walk it out and love him more than everyone else. He's not asking much just for us to love him more. See, he sent his son to give us a better life, an eternal life. Joel 2.13 says, don't, fear your don't tear your clothing in your grief, but tear your heart instead. Return to the Lord your God, for he is merciful and compassionate, slow to get angry and filled with unfailing love. He is eager to relent and not punish. I don't know about you. These are exciting scriptures to me. Listen, he says, don't tear your clothing. That's, all, that's cool. Tear your heart. Make that transformation real. Tear your heart. He will fill you. That terror in your heart, that hole that you, you have in your heart you feel like can't be filled, the world you're trying and, and it's not doing it, Jesus will fill that. He says, tear your heart and return to the Lord your God for he is merciful and compassionate, filled with unfailing love. He lets us choose. He gives us everything we need to choose him. And that's big. He doesn't give us everything we want. That would lead us back into our flesh. That would lead us back into our flesh and our joy and our happiness from this world leading us. He's saying, listen, he's eager to relent and show us mercy. He's full of unfailing love. Here's a few things I think that will help us. It helps me continue to walk it out and walk towards him. Number one, always move forward. Seems easy, but daily when we take up our cross, we should take it off, take it up, and we should be walking to him because we know him because we're studying and we're talking and we're praying. Some days will be harder than others. It's going to happen. Be ready. Keep watch. Don't be unaware. Keep opening the Bible and studying and seeking him. Your past is your past. Let it go. Don't look back. Keep moving forward. Listen, our past is really, really good for things. It's a good testimony. You have to know your testimony. You have to know your story of before Christ and after Christ. And you can help people. That's what's cool. We had a movie here um, Friday night. 
and it was a Christian movie of a, a ministry, a long side ministry. They go into prisons and they help people that are in prison and are getting released, and they pour into them. We had actually people that were in the program or just graduated from the program here to tell a story, and one of the ladies was sharing, and she said she grew up, and it was tough life. She started stripping, and she started being a prostitute, and in the process of that, she accepted Jesus, and he just took her, and she goes, I didn't have to feel bad about what I did. I just moved forward and praise God. See, he doesn't want us to look back, but he wants us to use it. See, I can't share a testimony about the struggles she's gone through and what God did. But I can share my testimony. And my testimony might reach somebody. Your testimony might reach somebody that I can't reach. And that's why we all together are living for Christ, sharing our testimonies, not looking back. Because two things happen when we look back, in my mind, is sometimes we're in such a, a bad state, we look back and we reminisce. Man, When I was in college, I just drank and didn't worry. I just let it go. And every time I was stressed or struggling, I just drank and got drunk. Ah, I wish I could do that. See, that's not good. Don't look back. Nothing you did before Christ was worth keeping, holding on to. Or two, we look back and we're sad. Oh, I'm so bad. Then we have guilt and we have fear that creeps in. And now we don't shine a light. We're just walking through life. Oh, I'm grateful, but man, oh, just a sinner saved by grace. No, he's going, man, you should be so full of joy and excited to tell people that you know me. Let your past go. Look forward. Luke 9, 62, Jesus says, Jesus told them, anyone who puts a hand to a plow and then looks black, then looks back, is not fit for the kingdom of God. Anyone, you're not fit. Because there's nothing good that's going to go on with that. You know your testimony. I don't have to look back to know what I did. Live it. Then show what change he did in your life. That's what makes people want to hear about Jesus. Not you pointing their fingers or you telling them they're bad. Number two, check everything with the word of God. Everything. Everything. The Word of God is real and accurate and written by God. People are writing it by God's hand, and it is true and good to help us know what's right and wrong. There's no better way to learn what's right or wrong than getting in God's Word and studying it enough to do it. Check everything with the Word. See, John 1.1 says, In the beginning, the Word already existed. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. There's nothing wrong at all with the Word of God. People in this world will tell you. They will try to get you off. Come on. Really? You can't have sex before you're married? Stupid. See, we have to understand that it is the Word of God that we have to line our life up with. The more we know him, the more we can fully devote to him. Look at Philippians 4, 8, 9. It says, and now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Keep putting into practice all you learned and received from me Everything you heard from me and saw me doing, then God of the God of peace will be with you. Keep putting into practice. Keep putting into practice. Watch out. Be ready. Stay alert. Hello. Power words said from the real deal who fills us with his love and fills us with all these traits that make us be able to live in this world and make a difference. See, our parents, our spouses, our kids, if they're living a way that is outside of what Jesus is showing us in the Word, we must choose Him, not them. I know that's hard. I have seven boys, me and my wife. I love them, but sometimes they don't 
line up with my beliefs. I don't change to make them happy. I live my life to honor God. And my kids will see it over and over and me sticking to my guns and not wavering. And I pray that they accept Jesus and have their own walk with them. I can't make them. They have to decide on their own. See, we still love them, but we can't let them affect what we believe. We water and plant seeds. That's what we do. God makes it grow. We don't ever give up watering and planting seeds. We can't make it grow. You can't get frustrated when you're your kids or your spouse or when it's not where you are at at this time, you just keep planting seeds and watering. If they don't open up for God to make it grow, it won't grow. The more you push sometimes, the more they put up a wall. Love them, love the Lord more. See, in this world's eyes, everything is okay if we want it to be. Everything feels good. We're going to make it okay. See, gender, now there's 100 plus genders. I can't change my gender unless I feel like I need to. Now there's all these genders. No, there's male and female. It's in the word of God. Sex, oh, sex any way I want it. It feels good. It should be right. Why, Why can't I live the way I want to live? Sex is between a man and a woman married. It's in the word. Marriage. Marriage is between a man and a woman. It's in the word. It does not mean you love anyone less. You don't point figures. We are not the judge and jury. We love people. We love God, and we live it out, and we shine a light, and we pray. Hey, I hope everyone finds the light. And I'll love you, and I'll help you, and I'll do anything for you. But I'm not going to say, you're right. Because you know more than God. And you know more than his word. See, if we live by our feelings and think our happiness will drive us, we will be lost in a cesspool forever, and we will never have that power to shine a light. Mark 13, 13 says, and this is what we have to grab onto as well. Jesus says, and anyone, or I'm sorry, and everyone will hate you because you are my follower. But those who endure to the end will be saved. See, when we love God above everything else, and we, this world goes, you're just judgmental. You just do this. The world will hate you. I want the world to hate me. I want to live my life for God so much that the world in the extremes hates me because then I'm living it right because I'm going to endure all this stuff that's going to happen every single day of my life. Are you ready to let go? Again, you love God. In comparison, you love less everything else. Still love them. Still pour into them. Still be there for them. He had to love God more. Three, relax. He's got this. He is the real deal. We win as believers. My favorite verse is Philippians 1.21. It says, for me, living means living for Christ and dying is gain. We win. I'll be home someday without this weird finger thing, without gout in my foot, without things going on. And I'll have no more fear, no more tears, no more suffering, and I'll be home. Relax. He's got it. Revelations 21, 6 and 7 says, and he also says, it is finished. I am the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. To all who are thirsty, I will give freely from the spring of water of life. All who are victorious will inherit all these blessings and I will be their God and they will be my children. Just pure excitement since I have accepted Christ. 
Life hasn't been easy since I accepted Christ, but it's been pure excitement and joy because I'm not wavering on what I believe and what I do. He is not against us. He is for us. Here's a couple take-homes, a few take-homes. Number one, wake up every day thankful that you did. We're not guaranteed today. We got a lot of day left. We're not guaranteed tomorrow. But be thankful that you're alive. You know why? Not because you're alive. Just for me. Be thankful that you're alive so you can shine a light for someone else. See, when you read God's word, you see people that are amazing. You see Paul who says, man, it's better that I die for me because I know where I'm going. But I know I'm going to be alive because I can reach more people. It's better for you, he says, that I live. Man, that's crazy. But Paul's got it. We're not alive for us. We're alive for others. We got to grab onto that. Be thankful that you made it. Number two, pray that not your will be done. I don't know about you. Sometimes I I want my will to be done. My flesh likes certain things. I like to do things. I have to pray, not my will be done. If you're stronger than that, awesome. But I would start every day. Thank you, God. Help me be like your son today. Help me not think of myself as I live. Do that. Because I said, feelings will creep in easy. Desires, flesh will creep in easy. Pray that your will not be done. And the last thing, be a doer of the word, not just a hearer. The word is not just there. It's alive and active. He is showing us what we need to do. So go be a doer. Read it. Go live it. And shine. Again, we're not the judge. We're not the jury. We're not pointing fingers. Oh, you need to do this. You're bad. No, go shine. When you live it out and you're consistent and you're consistent and you're loving people, the world will hate you, but the world is, I think, a little different. There's extremes in everything. See, there's some people in the world just wanting to see consistency and that you truly believe what you believe. And when you do that, they'll come to you and say, Man, you're so relaxed, and and you have such control. What is it? And you go, man, it's Jesus. And they go, man, I want to learn that. I've been there. I've been in a situation that being consistent had someone ask me, and I shared, and they accepted Christ, and they're walking it out now. See, we have to be ready for that. So be a doer of the word, not just a hearer. Let's pray. Dear God, I thank you so much for your love. I thank you that we have the opportunity to shine, that you give us all the tools that you need, that we need to live a life just like Jesus. It's hard. We're going to have to work and study and be aware and, and live it focused, not on this world, but on you. Be with us. Keep us strong and know that you are our passion. You are our desire. We love you, and we do all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a great week.